Okay, so in this film, we're going to look at what's the difference in social work between a theory, a model, a method, and an approach. Now, if you want to use this film for your own CPD, you might want to put down a few notes yourself about how confident you are about this topic, and maybe just put together a couple of thoughts around what you think the difference is between a theory, a model, a method, and an approach. At this point, you could pause the video to do that and then come back to it and see what I think the difference is. So, I think this is a really important topic. Some people would say to you, it doesn't really matter if something's a theory or a model, but I think it does matter because what it is impacts on how we use it in practice. So I have a particular way for myself to think through what's the difference between a theory, a model, a method, and an approach. And that's what I'm gonna take you through now. So in the world of science, a theory is said to do four things. A theory is said to help us to describe what's happening, explain why it's happening, predict what will happen next, and then intervene in a situation to bring about change. Now, in many ways, that actually reflects what we do as social workers. Think about it. When we first meet somebody, we're trying to work through with them to describe what's happening for them. We're looking together with that person at why this situation has come about. We also try to think about predictions. What do we think might happen in this situation, especially when there's an element of risk that we might need to consider? Then together with the person, we should look at what can we do, if necessary, to work together to bring about change in the situation. So in many ways, as a framework, this is often used to say, that actually, that's what a theory does, and in many ways, that's what a social worker does, so we're using theory all of the time, whether or not we're conscious of that. Now, on that first point, I would definitely agree. I think as social workers, we're using theory all of the time, but very often, we're not really conscious about that. We're maybe not making conscious thoughts around the theory that we're using, but we are using theory. However, I do think that in social work, a theory doesn't do all four of those things. Of course, social work draws on science, but it also draws on arts and humanities. It's very multidisciplinary. So in many ways, whilst we draw on that, it doesn't really work for us in social work in terms of what a theory does. So in social work, in fact, a theory only does the first three of those things. A theory helps us to describe what's happening, explain why it's happening, and predict what will happen next. It doesn't, though, help us to intervene and bring about change. It does inform our intervention, but it doesn't say, here's what to do and how to do it. Now, sometimes I get the opportunity, I'm really privileged to get the opportunity to work with large groups of students and I try and help them to work through this, what's the difference between a theory and a model. And I'll say to a group of students, for example, tell me about attachment, what's attachment? And they'll say really confidently, oh, that's a theory, Siobhan. If I say, why is it a theory? They'll say, well, it, it's called attachment theory. It's not enough to rely on something being called a theory or a model. There has been in the past quite a bit of confusion around this area, not just in social work, but in a range of disciplines. And so that means that something might be called a theory or might be called a model when it isn't. Actually, if you want to work through this, just take attachment as an example. Attachment helps us to describe a person's behaviors. It helps us to explain where those behaviours come from. It helps us to predict the likely impact of those behaviours on future relationships. It might inform our intervention plan, but it doesn't provide us with an intervention plan. So it's a theory. In social work, a theory helps us to describe, explain and predict. But to do that, intervene and bring about change, we need a model. So something like task-centred practice has been around for a long time now. Task-centred practice is a model. It's very clearly a model of intervention. 
Task centre practice doesn't in any way help you when you're going to see a person to describe what's happening for them, to explain why it's happening or to predict what might happen next. But it says, look, here's a really good way to work with people to bring about change. So task centre practice is a model. So just to clarify that then, a theory helps us to understand a situation whilst a model helps us to intervene. That hasn't always been effectively clarified in the past. So some writers have talked about models to understand and models to intervene. And some writers have talked about theory to understand and theory to intervene. If I'm honest in my own writing, I don't think I'm always clear about that when I look back at what I've written. I think the clearest way for us is to recognise that theories help us to understand a situation and models help us to intervene. What about a method though? I think there can be a lot of confusion in social work between a model and a method. They are connected, but they are different things. So a method is a specific tool or technique that we might use in our practice. It comes from a model. All methods, I think, pretty much come from a model. But just because you're using that particular method, it doesn't mean you've used the whole model. But of course, as a student particularly, it would be really helpful for you to know where that method comes from. Sometimes I go out and I do an observation of a student's practice and I'll see them do something really good and I'll say, that was great, where did that come from? And they'll say, oh, I don't know, I saw somebody else do it or my friend told me about it. Whereas actually what I really want a student to be able to say to me is, well, of course, that method comes from this particular model of practice. So try and work at that if you can do. As an example, I've put up here, Gem's questions is a questioning method which is drawn out of brief solution focused therapy. If you're not familiar with that, don't worry, we'll do other films that go through different models and methods. But just as an example, Gem's is a way of asking questions and the G stands for goal setting questions. The E is exception finding questions. The M, miracle questions. And the S, scaling questions. And of course, most social workers use one or two of those types of questions in any intervention with, with service users. Most of us use those questions. That's a particular method drawn out of brief solution focused therapy. It doesn't mean though that as a social worker, we're using that therapy but it means we're drawing out of that model to use particular methods. So, what about an approach? I asked about four things, a theory, a model, a method, and an approach. And I started off by talking about the difference between a theory and a model, and we're concluding this almost with an approach. But actually, in practice, we would generally start off with thinking about our approach. Our approach is our overall way of working. How do we go about something? How do we approach something? The approach that we take actually impacts on everything else that we do. So the approach we take will impact on the theory we choose to use to understand something or the model that we use to intervene. Some examples of contemporary approaches might be a strengths-based approach, which focuses in on looking at people's strengths rather than deficits. Or we might use a relationship-based approach, which is all about the importance of relationships in social work. So we've kind of talked through what's a theory, what's a model, what's a method, what's an approach. But now I want us to connect all of that together. How do those things connect and interrelate? And to help us to explore that, I'm going to use an analogy. I want us to think about theory as if it was the food of social work practice, because in many ways it is. Theory is what gives us the essential nutrients of our practice. It reflects the diversity of what we do. So think about what's your favorite kind of food? Maybe that indicates the approach that you take to practice. Nobody has exactly the same meal for breakfast, lunch and tea every day. None of us do. And if friends were coming round for dinner or if we were going out to eat somewhere, we might use a, or prefer a different kind of food. 
that's the approach that you like to take. I know if I had a friend coming round for tea, I might choose to cook something different than I would if I was eating on my own or just with my family. And that's what we do when we're working with people. We think about what's their taste? What's to their taste? What kind of approach do I need to take with this particular person? So you could think about it as, your approach is your favorite kind of food, but sometimes you adapt that kind of food depending on who you're eating with. We can have an individual professional approach, but sometimes an approach comes from government or sometimes an approach comes from our employer. So it may be that you would say to me, oh, Siobhan, my favorite kind of food it's having, it's a lovely little Italian that does its own homemade pasta. I really like it there. But the organisation that you work for might say, well, that's great, but we can't afford for you to eat there. We can only afford for you to eat in this kind of fast food place. So your approach and your employer's approach might not match together. And that's a good way of thinking about approaches in practice. There's not just a professional approach, but there's also an organisational approach. I've never met anyone who says to me, do you know what, Siobhan, my favorite approach to practice, it's a managerialist, bureaucratic approach to practice. And yet many of us as social workers have to use that in our practice. So let's be honest about the approach we want to take may not be the approach that we are enabled to take. But now let's look at how all of this connects together. So using that food analogy, I want you to think about a model in social work as if it was a curry. I know that sounds strange, but it helps us to put it all back together. So imagine what kind of curry you like to eat. Now you could go into, I grew up in Manchester, near to Curry Mile, and there there's loads of different types of curries. And you could go from one town to another town and you'd get very different kinds of curry because the spice used is different. Now I live near Birmingham. And there, it's full of Balti curries, totally different kind of curry again. You could go into a Thai restaurant and there you can have a whole traffic light system of curries. You can have red, you can have green, you can have yellow curries. You could have a Jamaican jerk curry. You can go into a fish and chip shop and you can get that kind of gloopy curry sauce that you pour on your chips. If I'm honest, that is my favorite kind of curry sauce. You can go into McDonald's and you can get curry sauce that you just dip your chips into. All of that is curry, but it's flavoured by a different approach. Now, two social workers could use the same model, the curry, but they flavour it completely differently because one of them has taken a Thai approach and another one has taken a fish and chip shop approach. The approach you take flavours the way in which you use a model in social work. So they're all very connected. Your theory, your model, your method, your approach in practice is all very connected. In summary, to demonstrate that connection, an approach is your overall way of going about something. How do you approach something? A theory provides you with a way to understand a situation or a perspective or what's happening in a person's life. The model gives you a structure to intervene in that situation. It provides you with an intervention strategy. And a method is a specific tool or technique that's generally drawn out of a model, which of course is flavored by an approach. So all of this is connected together. Some students find it helpful to think about the head, heart, hands framework that comes out of social pedagogy. And this can provide a really good way of us thinking about the difference between a theory, a model, a method, and an approach. So the head, heart, and hands of a practitioner. The head can represent the theory because that's how we understand what's going on. It's the knowledge that we draw on in our practice. The heart is effectively the beating heart of the practitioner. What makes us tick in practice? So that would represent our overall approach to practice as a social worker. The hands represent the model because that's about the skills and what you're doing in practice and how you go about something. Whereas if you put a tool into the hands, 
that's the method of practice because that specific tool in our hands drawn out of the model is our method. So the tool in the hands can represent the method that we use in social work. So I hope that this film has helped you to start to think about the difference in social work between a theory, a model, a method and an approach. There'll be lots of other films coming up that go through different examples of those. But to provide this basic framework, this starting framework, I think is really important for us as social workers and as students. So I hope that you've enjoyed the film and I hope that you'll watch more as I develop more and put more onto the channel. Please though, if you want to find out more, follow me on Twitter or on Facebook. Thanks very much for your time.